the snowy owl. The snowy owl is a large, white owl of the true owl family. It is sometimes also referred to, more infrequently, as the polar owl, white owl and the arctic owl. Snowy owls are native to the arctic regions of both North America and the Palearctic, breeding mostly on the tundra. It has a number of unique adaptations to its habitat and lifestyle, which are quite distinct from other extant owls. One of the largest species of owl, it is the only owl with largely white plumage. Males tend to be a purer white overall while females tend to more have more extensive flecks of dark brown. Juvenile male snowy owls have dark markings that may appear similar to females until maturity, at which point they typically turn whiter. The composition of brown markings about the wing, although not foolproof, is the most reliable technique to age and sex individual snowy owls. Most owls sleep during the day and hunt at night, but the snowy owl is often active during the day, especially in the summertime. The snowy owl is both a specialized and generalist hunter. Its breeding efforts and entirely global population are closely tied to the availability of tundra-dwelling lemmings but in the non-breeding season and occasionally during breeding the snowy owl can adapt to almost any available prey, most often other small mammals and northerly water birds. Snowy owls typically nest on a small rise on the ground of the tundra. The snowy owl lays a very large clutch of eggs, often from about 5 to 11, with the laying and hatching of eggs considerably staggered. Despite the short arctic summer, the development of the young takes a relatively long time and independence is sought in autumn. The snowy owl is a nomadic bird, rarely breeding at the same locations or with the same mates and often not breeding at all if prey is unavailable. A largely migratory bird, snowy owls often wandering almost anywhere close to the arctic sometimes unpredictably erupting to the south in large numbers. Given the difficulty of surveying such an unpredictable bird, there was little in-depth knowledge historically about the snowy owl's status. However, recent data suggests the species is declining precipitously. Whereas the global population was once estimated at over 200,000 individuals, recent data suggests that there are probably fewer than 100,000 individuals globally and that the number of successful breeding pairs is 28,000 or even considerably less. While the causes are not well understood, numerous, complex environment factors often correlated with global warming are probably at the forefront of the fragility of the snowy owl's existence. Description. The snowy owl, of course, is mostly white. They are purer white than predatory mammals like polar bears and arctic fox. Often when seen in the field, these owls can resemble a pale rock or a lump of snow on the ground. It usually appears to lack ear tufts but very short tufts can be erected in some situations, perhaps most frequently by the female when she is sitting on the nest. The ear tufts measure about 20 to 25 millimeters and consist of about 10 small feathers. The snowy owl has bright yellow eyes. The head is relatively small and, even for the relatively simply adapted hearing mechanism of a bubo owl, the facial disc is shallow and the ear is uncomplicated. One male had ear slits of merely 21 mm x 14 mm on left and 21 mm x 14.5 mm on the right. Females are almost invariably more duskily patterned than like age males. In mature males, the upper parts are plain white with usually a few dark spots on the miniature ear tufts, about the head and the tips of some primaries and secondaries whilst the underside is often pure white. Despite their reputation for being purely white, only 3 out of 129 Russian museum specimens of adult males showed an almost complete absence of darker spots. The adult female is usually considerably more spotted and often slightly barred with dark brown on the crown and the underparts. Her flight and tail feathers are faintly barred brown while the underparts are white in base color with brown spotting and barring on the flanks and upper breast. In confusingly plumaged snowy owls, the sex can be determined by the shape of wing markings, which manifest as bars more so in females and spots in males. However, the very darkest males and the lightest females are nearly indistinguishable by plumage. On rare occasion, a female can appear almost pure white, as has been recorded in both the field and in captivity. There is some evidence that some of the species grow paler with age after maturity. One study's conclusions were that males were usually but not always lighter and that correctly aging is extremely difficult, sometimes individuals either get lighter, darker or do not change their appearance with age. On the other hand, with close study, it is possible to visually identify even identify individual snowy owls using the pattern of markings on the wing, which can be somewhat unique in each individual. After a fresh molt, some adult females that previously appeared relatively pale newly evidenced dark, heavy markings. 
On the contrary, some banded individuals over at least four years were observed to have been almost entirely unchanged in the extent of their markings. In another very pale owl, the barn owl, the sexual dimorphism of spotting appears to be driven by genetics while, in snowy owls, environment may be the dictating factor instead. The chicks are initially grayish-white but quickly transition to dark grey-brown in the mesoptile plumage. This type of plumage camouflages effectively against the variously colored lichens that dot the tundra ground. This is gradually replaced by plumage showing dark barring on white. At the point of fledging, the plumage often becomes irregularly mottled or blotched with dark and is mostly solidly dark grey-brown above with white eyebrows and other areas of the face white. Recently fledged young can already be sexed to a semi-reliable degree by the dark marking patterns about their wings. The juvenile plumage resembles that of adult females but averages slightly darker on average. By their second molt fewer or more broken bars are usually evidenced on the wing. The extent of white and composition of wing patterns become more dimorphic by sex with each juvenile molt, culminating in the fourth or fifth pre-basic molt, wherein the owls are hard to distinguish from mature adults. Molts usually occur from July and September, non-breeding birds molting later and more extensively, and are never extensive enough to render the owls flightless. Evidence indicates that snowy owls may attain adult plumage at three to four years of age, but fragmentary information suggests that some males are not fully mature and or as fully white in plumage that they can attain until the ninth or tenth year. Generally speaking, molts of snowy owls occur more quickly than do those of Eurasian eagle owls. The toes of the snowy owl are extremely thickly feathered white, while the claws are black. The toe feathers are the longest known of any owl, averaging at 33.3 mm, against the great horned owl which has the second longest toe feathers at a mean of 13 mm. Occasionally, snowy owls may show a faint blackish edge to the eyes and have a dark grey sear, though this is often not visible from the feather coverage, and a black bill. Unlike many other whitish birds, the snowy owl does not possess black wingtips, which is theorized to minimize wear and tear on the wing feathers in the other whitish bird types. The conspicuously notched primaries of the snowy owl appear to give an advantage over similar owls in long-distance flight and more extensive flapping flight. The snowy owl does have some of the noise-canceling serrations and comb-like wing feathers that render the flight of most owls functionally silent, but they have fewer than most related bubo owls. Therefore, in combination with its less soft feathers, the flight of a snowy owl can be somewhat audible at close range. The flight of snowy owls tends to be steady and direct and is reminiscent to some of the flight of a large, slow-flying falcon. Though capable of occasional gliding flight, there is no evidence that snowy owls will soar. It is said that the species seldom exceeds a flying height of around 150 meters even during passage. While the feet are sometimes described as enormous, the tarsus is in osteological terms relatively short at 68% the length of those of a Eurasian eagle owl but the claws are nearly as large, at 89% of the size of those of the eagle owl. Despite its relatively short length, the tarsus is of similar circumference as in other bubo owls. Also compared to an eagle owl, the snowy owl has a relatively short decurved rostrum, a proportionately greater length to the interorbital roof and a much longer sclerotic ring surrounding the eyes while the anterior opening are the greatest known in any owl. Owls have extremely large eyes which are nearly the same size in large species such as the snowy owl as those of humans. The snowy owl's eye, at about 23.4 mm in diameter, is slightly smaller than those of great horned and Eurasian eagle owls but is slightly larger than those of some other large owls. Snowy owls must be able to see from great distances and in highly variable conditions but probably possess less acute night vision than many other owls. Based on the study of Dioptra in different owl species, the snowy owl was determined to have eyesight better suited to long-range perception than to close discrimination, while some related species such as great horned owls could probably more successful perceive closer objects. Despite their visual limits, snowy owls may have up to 1.5 times more visual acuity than humans. Like other owls, snowy owls can probably perceive all colors but cannot perceive ultraviolet visual pigments. Owls have the largest brains of any bird, with the size of the brain and eye related less to intelligence than perhaps to increased nocturnality and predatory behavior. Size The snowy owl is a very large owl. They are the largest avian predator of the high arctic and one of the largest owls in the world. Snowy owls are about the sixth or seventh heaviest living owl on average, around the fifth longest and perhaps the third longest winged. 
This species is the heaviest and longest winged owl in North America, the second heaviest and longest winged owl in Europe but is outsized in bulk by about three to four other species in Asia. Male snowy owls have been known to measure from 52.5 to 64 centimeters in total length, with an average from four large samples of 58.7 centimeters and a maximum length, perhaps in need of verification, of reportedly 70.7 centimeters. In wingspan, males may range from 116 to 165.6 cm, with a mean of 146.6 cm. In females, total length has been known to range from 54 to 71 cm, with a mean of 63.7 cm and an unverified maximum length of perhaps 76.7 cm. Female wingspans have reportedly measured from 146 to 183 cm, with a mean of 159 cm. Despite one study claiming that snowy owl had the highest wing loading of any of 15 well-known owl species, more extensive sampling demonstratively illustrated that the wing loading of snowy owls is notably lower than Eurasian eagle and great horned owls. The conspicuously long-winged profile of a flying snowy owl compared to these related species may cause some to compare their flight profile to a bulkier version of an enormous buteo or a large falcon. Body mass in males can average from 1,465 to 1,808.3 grams, with a median of 1,658.2 grams and a full weight range of 1,300 to 2,500 grams from six sources. Body mass in females can average from 1,706.7 to 2,426 grams, with a median of 2,101.8 grams and a full weight range of 1,330 to 2,951 grams, larger than the aforementioned body mass studies. A massive pooled data set at six wintering sites in North America showed that 995 males averaged at 1,636 grams, while 1,189 females were found to average 2,109 grams. Reported weights of down to 710 grams for males and of 780 to 1,185 grams for females are probably in reference to owls in a state of starvation. Such emaciated individuals are known to highly impaired and starvation deaths are probably not infrequent in winters with poor food accesses. Thanks for watching.